In this video with Mr. Long, we are looking at spreadsheets and Microsoft Excel, and we're going to look at how we can create charts. Some people like to call them graphs. We're going to be calling them charts today, and how can we can make the different charts and change a couple of their settings. Here we have a spreadsheet with some data, and the idea behind charts is that we want to visualize the information or the data, and that gives us a better representation of what's going on, and then we can make better decisions based on that data. So let's have a look at some examples. Now, first of all, where are the charts in Excel? So if I come here to insert, I click on insert, and you'll see here is the chart section. There's a whole bunch of charts, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but we'll just go through a couple of them just to get an idea of what you're doing, then you can apply them to the different situations that you need them. The main charts that people tend to use, there's obviously the, the column and the bar chart are the most popular. And then we've got, you've got your line charts that are also very popular. Pie charts are also one of the most common used charts that you get. And then you do get all these others. So for example, there's tree maps and there's some weird and wonderful box and whisker and histogram for statistics. There are waterfall and funnels and they're all different options. Even the scatter plot is sometimes used more often than others. And there's a whole bunch. You can even write a combo where you've got multiple charts in one chart lots of different options available to you now the first thing that you need to do is select the data so let, let's do a simple column chart quickly so we're going to select the data i want to find the the sales and the company name it would be very tempting to just select that data but i like to do the headings as well because then it will include those headings in your chart so let's, we've selected the data let's go to the chart and we're going to select a simple little 2d chart and and it's that easy so as you can see they have put in the data there they put in the what each column means for each company and they've given it a nice little title so there's our first little chart that we've got now there are some things that we can change on the chart for example this chart title i don't like i'm going to change it and you can just edit it manually say company sales for 2022 maybe you want to make it a bit more descriptive so there we go so there is our chart now there's a whole bunch of options when you click on a chart you get all these options over here we're going to start from the bottom if i select filter so that means we can actually filter some of the data for example if we don't want certain values maybe i don't want def and i don't want jkl i can deselect them and apply and it will remove them from the chart and then i can come back here and just go hey select them all please and then apply and now they're all back so those are nice little options available for the filter you can also filter by names as well if you want but if we come here to the style so there's a whole bunch of styles available if you click on a chart you also get the chart design and it's also over here where you've got the different chart styles you can also use these the wonderful little options over here that you can select from so you can choose the different chart styles and you can choose particular color schemes that you might want to use for example there we go or maybe you want those and now you'll see there's only one color being used if you had multiple sets of data selected then it would use the other colors we'll show you that in another example but you can also change the colors over there so those are the two bottom ones when it comes to these options now this plus sign is going to become your friend when you want to edit your chart so let's click on it and see now your axes that's this this is your x axis and that's your y axis well they refer to it as the horizontal axis and the vertical axis now when you've got an axis you can see that there's values there if i deselect it then it takes all those values away but obviously we want it and we can then click on this arrow to get more options so this box appears and whatever axes you select so if you select for example this one then we'll get the options for that particular axis if we select this one you'll get the option for that now you'll see there are options we got to the fill and the line of that particular area there are text options if you want to change the text fill and the text outline you can do that as well um, let's go back to the axes options and then there's the layout the alignment how the text must line up and then the different options over there as well so you got lots of little options to play around sometimes it's difficult to go through all of them but you can go find exactly what you're looking for when you find it but let's take for example this one over here if i click on these values there and i come to the options over here let's click on that option there axes options you will see we can specify the lowest value and the highest value at the moment is 0 to 350 if i wanted to just start maybe i wanted to start at 100 then we can do that we can change the lowest value being 100 and then if we click away you'll see it adapts the chart so that it goes from 100 to 350 we can always change also it says 50 units in between so we can change that as well maybe we want it to be 100 units 
and you can do something like that where it specifies 100, 200, 300, and you get an idea like that. So you can do modifications like that as well. You can always just reset it to go back to normal. So you can play around with those particular options if you want. If I wanted to change the orientation of this particular text, for example, I wanted to flow maybe down, then I can click on that particular one, go to the text options here. Let's look at the text options available here, and maybe the alignment. Maybe we want it to flow like that, for example, so it flows like that. You can play around with those options, maybe we'll put it back to normal. Those are the types of things that you can do with the axes. Now, other things that you can do, I'm going to close this. When we click on it, and we can click on the option to have titles, which means there's a title at the bottom that we can specify we just want one for the horizontal or vertical. We can select that to have them both there, and then you can click on there to edit that particular title and say this is company name, companies, I'll put it there, companies, and this one is sales. So there we go. So we can have a little values on the axes. And then when you click on them as well, and you've got the options over here to change their text fill and so on like that. Let's click on some more options here. Let's go. Yeah, we can see data labels. Now we don't know what that value is there. If I put my mouse over, it'll tell me. But if I want to visually see a 302, because we know it's 302, those are your data labels. So if I put in data labels, you can specify where you want them to be. You can see where you want them to be or you can go to more options and you can specify it there's the value maybe you want a particular the, the category name for example or you include it you can do things like that as well so you can do that i want this to be actually i want to put it inside at the end there there we go so you can do little things like that with your data labels let's go add some a data table just another way of displaying the results at the bottom you can have that if you want i don't normally like the data table, but you can do that grid lines are already selected but you can go and edit those grid lines you can add more grid lines if you want you can have minor ones and major ones and if you click on more options you can also specify which of those lines you want to view and we can also go here to legend the legend is what tells me what each color represents now in this case we've only got one color so there's no real point to having a legend we'll show you a legend in another example and then trend line we'll come to another example where we show you a trend line so those are the basics so let's go try another chart quickly so i'm going to move this over here move this out the way and let's go do another chart okay so let's do a chart now where we want to do a column or bar chart where we want the data for each individual quarter now the problem with it this is selecting the data i want to select all that data but i don't want this stuff in between well i'm going to select the names of the companies and i'm press control on my keyboard and then select the data over here do you see how it's allowed me to only select the data that i want that's perfect and then i can come here to insert and we're going to insert a particular chart let's go with a column chart or bar chart sorry bar chart there we go and there you can see there you can see the different colors and it's grouped there obviously by abc at the bottom and you can see the different options and you can see all the yellows are q4 and so on and so on and so on so you can play around with those options now if i change the colors now you'll see where the color schemes come into effect by changing all those colors okay but maybe you don't want this particular layout maybe you want to see q1 q2 you want to check all the values for q1 and compare them together you don't want to compare the companies together you don't want them grouped by company you want them grouped by the quarters well in that case when you select the chart you can come here to switch row and column and it spot it switches between these two so let's do that. There we go. So now we've got Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And there you can see the data all grouped together and so on. Now this thing at the bottom here, that is the legend. If I click here, you see that the legend is selected. And we can specify where we want it. I might want it on the right hand side like that. But there you can see the legend indicates what each of the colors means. Yeah, I moved it out of the way. Let's do another chart. Let's say we want to do another chart. Let's do a pie chart where we want to do the profits for the companies. I'm going to select all the company names. I'm going to press control and select the profits. And let's go look at inserting a pie chart. So let's do a 3D pie chart. So if I click on there, there we can see our pie chart already. So I can come here and already I should probably add data labels. Just a little take note that when you add data labels to your pie chart, there are a slightly more options available. You can actually use the percentage as well. I don't want the value. I want the percentage because I can see what percentage each value is represented. That's normally a nice option for a pie chart. So there we go. So that's what I like to do with my pie charts. So there's a nice little pie chart of the different cells. You see how it automatically included the profit as the label. It automatically included those values. 
So I'm going to move this one over here. That's the, the last chart we're going to do is let's do one for DEF supplies, but just DEF supplies and just their quarter values. So I'm select DEF supplies. I'm going to press control and select DEF values, quarter values, but I want those headings. I'm going to select company name and I'm also going to select Q1 to Q4. So I've got all the data I need. I'm going to go insert. We're going to come here to a line chart. Let's do a line chart with the little dots for the markers. I like that one. So there we can see how this has progressed over over the different quarters. So what I'm going to add to this one, if I click on the plus sign, we're going to add that trend line and you can see the different options available. When we add a trend line, it'll show you the trend over the duration. So like if there was a linear line, you can see what the linear line is, exponential, if it's curved a little bit, you can do a forecast to see where we're going, a time period. So there are lots of options available with the trend line if you want to add a trend line to your chart. All of these options that I've added here, you can also get them if you click on a chart over here where you add an element over here. So you've got them all available there as well. So that's what I would recommend that you do. The last little, just a little tip here quickly before we move on to our next video with particularly with pie charts. If I wanted to do a pie chart of all the company of the percentage of companies that are national and local, it would be very tempting to select that data and to insert a pie chart. But you'll see it's, it's quite a useless pie chart. It gives us no information. So you can't really just do that when it comes to text. What you would need to do is something like this, where you count how many national there are, count how many local there are, and then you would do a pie chart on this data over here. So this is a little bit more represented. There you can see the percentage that are local and that are national. So when you're dealing with like particularly text values, you can't just ran, just select them and hope that it will do it. Do a nice little count if, and then you can do your pie chart on that result. And there we go. We've learned how to create. Now our next video, we'll do some more editing of these charts. For more videos on Office-related content like Excel, Access, as well as Word, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and check out the playlists. And don't forget... Don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.